My name is Diane Briscoe McKenzie, and I'm a member at Montview Boulevard Presbyterian Church. I grew up in Denver. I went to school at Barrett, Ele oops, I'm sorry, Park Hill Elementary School and Barrett Elementary School, Smiley, and East High School. And I grew up in the days of civil rights when Martin Luther King was leading a movement asking and calling for equal rights for all Americans. My mother participated in the civil rights movement and actually had my brother and I also participate in the civil rights movement. And today I'd like to share with you a book about the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King and about his growing up and becoming an adult and leading this movement. And the reason that we celebrate his birthday this coming Sunday, I think it's the 18th. Yeah, this coming Sunday we celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King Day because of his work in the civil rights movement and leading the civil rights movement. So I'm going to share this book with you. So this is the beginning of the book. It's uh, Martin Luther King Jr. And you can see a picture of him as an adult. And we're gonna start with where he is growing up in, in Georgia, in Atlanta, Georgia. So, his boyhood home was filled with love. Martin had an older sister he called Chris and an older brother he called Alfred Daniel. Their mother, Alberta, spoke softly and was kind. It was very easy for Martin to talk to her. Martin's father, Martin Sr., was a large man with a booming voice. He was a minister of the Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia. The church was filled with song. Martin loved music and sang in the church choir. He enjoyed Sunday school and had many friends there. Martin got along with everyone, the children, the parents, and the teachers. But sometimes Martin's life was sad. Martin had a good friend he played with almost every day. Then when they turned six years old, Martin went to a school for black children and his friend went to a, child, a school for white children. One day, the boy's father told him he could no longer play with Martin because Martin was black. Heartbroken, Martin ran home and cried to his mother. That night at dinner, Martin's parents told him it was his duty as a Christian to love everyone, even when he was angry at them. Martin's mother also said he should always feel a sense of somebodiness, that he was important, even though the outside world was telling him he was not simply because of his skin color. In those days, in the Southern United States, black people could only drink from water fountains labeled colored and they were not even allowed to go into any many, into many restaurants and stores. This was called segregation, the separation of blacks from whites. As he grew up, Martin's heart began to grow heavier and sadder. He tried to remember his mother's words, that he was somebody, that he was important, but it wasn't easy. You see him staring in the window there where all the white people were in the restaurant and he couldn't go in. One day, Martin's father took him shoe shopping. Even though the store was empty, the shopkeeper told them they had to go to the back of the store and wait to be served. Mr. King became angry. If he couldn't buy shoes for his son in the front of the store, he wouldn't buy them there at all. Taking hold of Martin's hand, he marched out. I don't care how long I have to live with this system, I will never accept it, Martin's father said. Martin would grow up feeling the same way as his father. Martin was a very good student. He even skipped two grades. Before starting Morehouse College at the age of 15, he took a summer job in Connecticut. Things were different there for black people. In the North, black and white children went to the same schools. There were no separate water fountains. Everyone could shop in the same stores. Martin Luther King Jr. had a dream. He dreamed that these things could happen in the South too. 
Was there a way he could help people change the laws to make this dream come true? Martin decided to spend his life helping black people. He thought perhaps if he became a minister, he could reach people with his words. So he became an assistant minister at his father's church and went to seminary. Later, Martin entered Boston University. There he met Coretta Scott, who was studying to be a singer. On their first date, they talked about how hard it was to be black in the United States. They talked about how people could live together in peace instead. After only one hour, Martin was sure he would marry Coretta one day, and he did. After Martin and Coretta got married, a letter arrived from a church in Montgomery, Alabama. The church leaders invited Martin to give a sermon there. If he did a good job, they would make him their minister. On a clear winter day, Martin drove from Boston to Montgomery. He knew his words had to come from his heart. He knew he could help people find strength to live out their faith, and Martin got the job. With his words, Martin told church members to go out and vote. Voting was one of the ways to change unfair laws against black people. With his words, Martin helped organize protests. He told black people not to ride the buses in Alabama. Martin and others didn't think it was fair for black people to be forced to ride in the back of the bus. And with his silence, Martin and many others sat at white on, whites only lunch counters. One summer day, thousands of people traveled to Washington DC for the March on Washington for jobs and freedom. Martin was the last to speak that day. I have a dream, his voice boomed that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Thousands of other people shared Martin's dream. Hand in hand, they walked through quiet valleys, over steep hills, and along busy highways, their hearts filled with hope for equality. Martin won important awards for his work. Sadly, he did not live to see all of his dreams come true, but he did see the day when the laws were changed so that Americans of all colors were allowed to go to school together, sit together in restaurants, and shop at the same stores. Each day, people honor him when they visit his memorial statue in Washington, D.C. Martin Luther King Jr. will be forever remembered as a leader who fought for equal rights and freedom for all. In many places around the world, this fight continues and Martin's dream and words and dreams live on. And that's our story this morning about Dr. Martin Luther King.